Welcome to Tuesday Night of Hope. It's June 30th, just days before July 4th celebration. And I'm sure uh, you have some plans around your house. You may not be gathering everybody around, but uh, you're looking forward to celebrate on July 4th with uh, who's ever there. And you're going to have a barbecue, I suppose. And it's just a great time. And actually, tomorrow would be uh, Dominion Day in Canada. I was raised in Canada, but now I'm an American citizen. But I still remember uh, Dominion Day. And what that meant was that was the day that Canada became a sovereign nation, a dominion per se. And uh, tonight we're going to just study about the, the power of uh, God in our lives, that God's given us dominion over things. And uh, in the same way, God is sovereign in you. I pray tonight that we're going to experience something phenomenal. We're going to shift it up a little bit. I'm going to share from my heart and just give you some thoughts about why are we even doing Tuesday Night of Hope and what is the purpose of the Tuesday Night of Hope, but also give you some spiritual direction on what God can do. I just believe that we should never do anything without praying. And for you that are watching tonight, I pray that we'll just join together in heart, that God will show us something about his sovereignty and how we have dominion over things in life instead of them having dominion over us. So join me in prayer, would you? Father God, I thank you for the night you've given to us. I thank you for Tuesday nights of hope. I thank you for the great team that God has put around us to do some great things, to reach into the hearts of men and women and children, young people, that God, we want to see some great things take place in their life. So God, we're giving ourselves to you that you would take the simple gift we have and you would make it great for not for our benefit, but for each one of us that we would grow in our faith in Jesus name. Amen. So why did we start Tuesday Night of Hope? Well, I'll tell you the truth. It was during the pandemic. And I thought, you know what? What? How do you survive from Sunday to Sunday? There has to be a word of hope. There has to be something that we are doing tangible to try to invest in people and share the message of Jesus that we're not bringing bad news, but we wanted to bring good news, news that God could bring a miracle to your house, news that you're not in this thing alone, news that God has a plan. And we wanted you to know that you could hope in God and hope in God doesn't mean you rub the genie's belly and hope you get everything, but knowing that God is leading you and God is guiding you and God is protecting you, God is building you, God is doing all the things he promised and we're positioned on ourselves on the Tuesday night of hope. It's a great team that sings and uh, leads us into worship. Someone said, well, why do we have worship? Well, I'll tell you, worship is one of the most important parts of my Christian walk. I think worship is the time that it, it's, it's not something I could always do all the time. I can, but it's when I'm focused like this and hearing the hearts of uh, men and women lead us in singing and songs from their heart, it connects me to the spirit so that I begin to reach out. So Tuesday Night of Hope is filled with word. It's filled with worship. It's filled with prayer. It's filled with encouragement. And it's, I believe, your choice to be a part to receive hope. And then what do you do with hope? You share it. So the Tuesday Night of Hope was, wasn't just something we're doing. It's something we're all doing. And so I hope you in, have enjoyed Tuesday Night of Hope. We're not looking to go anywhere. We're going to continue on as long as the Lord wants us to do this. Because I believe just when everything ends and everything appears back to normal, we'll start, we're still going to need to have hope. Because that's what we need in life is we need hope. So tonight I want to just share something that might make you think a little bit. I'm going to make this statement and I want you to think about it as we go into the teaching. Here's what I want, I want you to hear about. Can we ever live with great expectations ever again? I'll say it again. Can we ever live with great expectations again? It seems like you take five steps forward during this time and you take seven back or two back or three back or one back that it's hard to have expectations because there's nothing solid. Even as we're planning about opening the church again, we're trying to find a time and a place and, and we're working towards a goal when we're going to get back in here and that's what we're working towards. But the expectation is that we're that and we're trying to have a great expectation that people are going to want to come and worship God and experience God, but I can't control people. So my expectations have changed that the only thing I'm doing now, and this is the, the lesson for the night is your expectations have to be founded in God. 
They can't have expectations of others because each person handles life so differently. And if they handle it differently, it might disappoint you. It might frustrate you. But I'm challenging you during this Tuesday Night of Hope on June 30th that you're going to take this scripture and you're going to think about this as a foundation on how do you get great expectation back into your household. Here's what it is. Jeremiah 32, 17 in the Living Bible says, O Lord God, can you just hear that? O Lord God. You have made the heavens and the earth by your great power. Nothing is too hard for you. Wow. Nothing is too hard for you because he created everything. So as I start thinking about great expectations, I've got to have a great expectation in who God is, who he promises to be and what he says. So then it comes down to two tangible things that I think are very important. You have to check your faith level and your faith level has to do with your belief. It's what you're believing in. It's what you stand for. The word believe, believe rather means accept something as true and you find a sure sense of truth. Believe. It's Christmas time. You see cards. I've seen many Christmas cards. We're not even close to Christmas, but I was just thinking about this because I saw this card and it stayed in my mind. It just said believe with an exclamation point, believe. And I start to think that, wow, God, thank you that you put in me revelation. Thank you that you've allowed experiences to form my belief. And so when I read a scripture that nothing is too hard for him, I really do believe it. Because through my journey, I've had revelation that's personal and I've had experience that's personal. Plus, I also hear other people's story that really builds me up. It's like iron sharpens iron that I hear their story that all of a sudden I'm starting to believe. So the question I have to ask you is, if I asked you, what do you believe in? Wow. What do you believe in? For me? I believe that Jesus Christ died on a cross for me and you, that I might have life, that I might have eternal life, that I would have my sins forgiven. And it doesn't mean I'm sin free. It means my sins are forgiven, that I'm in process, that I'm in journey every day, that I'm going through this process of transformation and I'm believing in this same thing. Here's a here's an interesting thought. I believe in biblical equality. I believe regardless of gender, regardless of, of race, God's word is about equality. God's word declares that he is truth. God's word declares that men and women were created in his likeness, that we, we, we together are following his plan. And I believe that when I believe something, I will receive. See, the other part of my belief for Joel, what it is, is I believe any impossibility can become a possibility. And if I would start living like it's a probability, my faith level would soar to an entirely new level. I want to challenge you today that you start thinking about what do I actually believe in? Well, you don't get in your car with no gas in it and believe you're going to get somewhere. You have to really invest you have to take care of that car. You have to make sure there's gas in that car. You have to make sure there's oil in that car. You have to make sure there's tires on that car. So it sounds like a lot of work to own a car. But you know, it's funny when you talk about spirituality, you think it's not about anything. It should just be given to you. That's not true. I want to believe in a God that loves me, that wants relationship with me, that wants to pour out life into me, which he is doing daily, that I then become a vehicle that carries that message of hope, that I am believing this, and the belief that I have becomes contagious. See, the belief that you have is contagious to somebody. So when you start believing with God, all things are possible. Nothing is too difficult for God. 
That's powerful because now you're speaking words of hope. Now you're speaking words of truth. Now you're speaking not words about you. You're speaking words about him. See, you can't do a miracle. You can't do the deliverance. You can't do the salvation. You can't do the healing. You can't do the financial miracle. All we can do is look to him and give him praise because I believe. I wonder what the shepherds felt when they finally got to the manger. They had a miraculous moment. I wonder if they looked at each other and said, we believe. See, I got to ask you today again, what do you believe in? Is your faith so limited and restricted based on religion? See, that wouldn't be abnormal, really, because in the Bible days, there's a lot of stories of, of people that had unbelief. See, what happens is when people have unbelief, their heart gets hard. And what happens is sometimes the, the unbelief takes place because the things that take place with God, they don't always make sense to us. It, it doesn't always come across, across clear that, that God is doing things and I don't know how he's doing it. See, miracles that God does are those things that you think are impossible that, we, that, that we're sitting there and we walk in unbelief. It's almost, I think, it's because it could be based on insufficient evidence. You're wanting a lot of evidence to prove that God is doing this or God is that. But what if it doesn't line up? In the New Testament, Jesus went in and he healed someone on the Sabbath. Guess what? People had a heart of unbelief that they missed the miracle and they got hung up on legalism that the fact that Jesus did a miracle on Sunday. So the insufficient evidence was, what are you doing on Sunday? Why would you do this? Why would you do something like that? But if you believe that God has to perform in a box, then you've just taken away God's power. Not that you can, because God is greater than you. He'll do things to get your attention. But I'm telling you, when you understand that God can do anything, anything, that I could start believing that I've got to make sure that I don't have unbelief, because unbelief can be crazy. See, I think what can take place also, uh, I, I think sometimes why we have unbelief is that we leave God out of the equation. We try so hard in ourselves because we've had disappointments, we've had frustrations that we're not counting on God. And let me ask you a question so we could go on all day about belief and unbelief, but I got to ask you, what does authentic belief look like in action? What does authentic belief belief look like in action man I ask myself that question and I start thinking I start thinking man what does authentic believing look like or authentic belief wow and I thought of the scripture that tells us the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me so my authentic believing organic believing not so much calculated that I have a structure that I've got to go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then I can believe. But belief is something that organically just lives out of you that just is authentic, that just comes out with every move you make. I started to think about what it would have been, would have been like to be a follower of Jesus when the disciples were walking along and Jesus would see someone that had a need, whether it was lepers, and he wasn't even supposed to be hanging around with lepers and he goes and gets in the middle of it. And, and when I say the middle of it, leprosy is contagious. Leprosy separates you and puts you into a colony and puts you into an entire different realm of living. The uh, centurion came to Jesus and said, my daughter is dying. And Jesus looked at the centurion and said something that I don't think a lot of us might say. Because he didn't come to the church. He may not have been a tither. He may not have ever served at the food ministry or at anything else, setting things up. But he just walked up with his Roman uniform on and said, Master, my daughter is sick and dying. But here's authentic believing. Jesus isn't in the picture, now it's me. Someone walks up that I don't think maybe fits the bill per se, would I say, go, your daughter's well. Because I believe it's the God 
the God of the universe that's everywhere, not just limited to a room, that he could go and heal his daughter. Go, your faith. Go, your faith. Your faith has seen your daughter whole. How about the woman caught in adultery? Everybody wants to stone her. Everybody wants to cast her out. But Jesus, Jesus goes and loves and stops the stoning party. And no one got stoned in those days. And so, per se, but he stopped the stoning right there. And he told her, where are your accusers? See, maybe what we need today is if we're going to have belief, maybe we should believe that Jesus can set anybody free. Maybe we could believe that God is able to do all things and do it well. Maybe we are who we believe he is, that my belief begins to be acted out in faithfulness to who he is, not to who I am. So I started to think more about this and authentic faith. Someone has need. Do I turn my back on it or do I walk up and say, I'm going to pray for you and believe that God's going to turn it around. And it might be that you're a part of the turning around, that you sow a seed into them, that that seed becomes a harvest, not only in their life, but your life. And I start thinking, okay, what could I do then that all of a sudden, instead of me worrying about everybody else, how am I going to make this happen? God, teach me as an organic, authentic believer, that I will learn how to love you and I will learn how to love others, that I will have a daily practicing exercise of faith. Maybe you could pray this this week is, God, teach me how to exercise my faith based on my belief. So when you're driving, you're praying and you're believing and asking for things that based on your faith, what you believe in. See, I believe without a question that the belief that you and I have is not founded in what the church says, it's founded in what the word says. Trust me, your world's about to change when you learn what it is to believe. Because when you believe, everything comes alive. What's dead in you today? Maybe it's time you start believing. And as we segue into worship, I want you to know that in worship, you'll find freedom. In worship, you're singing the words back or you're listening to the words and you're speaking them out loud that's truth because now you're going to start believing. And if you want authentic belief to take place, step one, recommit to God without limits. And step two, reevaluate who your circle is because not everybody's circle believes the way the word is. Be careful. Be careful who you associate with because not everybody speaks life. Circle yourself with people that speak life and believe that God has big things for you. Enjoy this next segment of worship and I'm going to come back and I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to believe that great things are going to take place in your life because of your belief in a God that can do the impossible. When night has fallen, when fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up. You won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. I feel it breaking out like an echo. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. I feel it breaking out like an echo, echo in my soul. My soul. Echo in my soul. Soul. When my mind says I'm not good. God, you're enough for me. I've decided I'm not giving up. You won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. I feel it breaking out like an echo. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. I feel it breaking out like an echo. 
won't give up on me. You won't give up on me. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. I feel it breaking out like an echo. Your love is holding on and it won't let go. No, I feel it breaking out like an echo. Echo in my soul. Oh, yeah. So. simply thank you Jesus sing this with us
What a powerful night. What a great night of hope. Tuesday night of hope that we've reevaluated what we believe, who we believe in, and how we exercise our belief system. I'm praying for you today that if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, today you would make that choice, that you would say, I need to believe in Jesus, that Jesus needs to become my Lord, not a part-time Lord, but an all-time Lord. And as you pray this prayer with me, if you want to believe with me, pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me that I might have life. I believe that you died for me that I might have life and more abundantly. I believe that you died for me that I could become an overcomer. I believe that you died for me, Jesus, that I am free because he who the sun sets free is free indeed. God, I pray that you would touch every person watching. Their faith has gotten cold. I pray that their heart would soften. Where unbelief has overruled belief, and now today is the day that it's shifting back, that we're going to start believing for those things that you declare in your word for us. The 8,000 promises are ours. And I pray that as you take the word, you grab this book, you grab this book and you start reading and let it become the bread of life to you. Your world's about to change. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. And I pray as you go about this week, you celebrate safely on July 4th. Celebrate the fact that you live in, in this great land and pray for our leaders. Pray for our world. We need a healing. God bless you. I'm Pastor Joel. I'll look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless you.